We're getting started. Yes, sir. Sorry. Do you want? Do you want to? Do you want to introduce? No. Hi, everyone. We are the community working group. Our session is going to be slightly different. We're going to blast through some of the slides, so we can have it more be an interactive thing where we do some Q and A. We explain some processes, and if you have any questions at any time, just. I was gonna say yell it out, but we don't encourage people to yell. But yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think given given that we are, you know, <laughs> the four of us and the four of you, um, you know, I, I think, you know, I am gonna go through the slides pretty quickly. Um, and, but um, but yeah, I, I think just throw up a hand if you have any questions. Um, they probably do want questions to be asked into the microphone, so they're caught on the recording. Um, but um, yeah, we'll uh, go ahead and get started. So once again, this is the uh, demystifying the community working group, not decouple Drupal. If you were uh, looking for that to be demystified for you, we've got something else today. So. Uh, community Working Group, we're a uh, volunteer group uh, of uh, community members. I'm George Demet. Um, I'm the chair. I joined in March 2013, oh, sorry, I joined the group at pretty much at its start in uh, 2013 and I've been chair since 2016. And then we've got Jordana uh, from Suriname, uh, Alex from the UK, and Mike from Florida. And, uh, and then you see we've got a, a question mark, and that is uh, because we are always looking for uh, new uh, members, folks who are interested in uh, helping us out um, or joining our group. In addition to the four of us who are kind of the full-time members of the group who respond to and receive like kind of every issue that comes through, we also have a handful of folks who we call uh, SMEs or subject matter experts and those are folks who represent kind of um, who can provide some kind of uh, specialized knowledge whether it's um, you know language uh, context uh, you know we have someone in, in South Asia we have someone in continental Europe um, and again that is an area where we're always looking to expand kind of uh, our group to make sure that we're being as representative of possible of our global community. So if you do want to help out, but you can't like do full time, oh, thank you. <laughs> and you can't do full time CWG work, but you would like to help out in certain ways where you know you, you have some cultural, you know you have some expertise in something. Yeah. We are always looking for subject matter experts right. where you don't have to be full time. Right. And, it, and it's not just like regional or cultural language. I mean, you know, uh, we've had folks help us out with legal issues. Mental, mental health, health. Uh, you know, communications training. Sorry, I shouldn't have put a candy in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> communications training, all of this kind of stuff. It's so, so great for us to have. So. Absolutely. So what do we actually do, right? So our charter uh, tasks us with uh, maintaining a friendly and welcoming uh, community for the Drupal project, right? So in order to do that, we help resolve conflicts uh, between community members through our established process. Um, you know, we can also act as a point of escalation, mediation, or arbitration if folks are, you know, having a conflict or a dispute and are unable to resolve it between themselves. Uh, we're responsible for upholding the uh, Drupal Code of Conduct. Um, we recognize community leadership every year through the Aaron Winborn Award. So for folks who were uh, in the opening session uh, yesterday, Leslie Glenn was the winner this year. Um, we've also given the award to Kathy Tees, uh, Gabor Hoitze, uh, Nikki and Nikki Stevens, and Kevin Thal as well. So um, that's a way that we um, try to recognize pot of positive examples of leadership in our community. So, um, you know, it really is about helping making sure that, that all of us have the tools and knowledge and the resources to be able, um, you know, to navigate, uh, you know, the community in as, as effective a way as possible. Um, it is inevitable that there will always be conflicts, right? People have different ideas about how to do things, um, but as much as possible, we want to encourage pos uh, people to uh, work with each other to resolve those disagreements or, or disputes or conflicts in a positive and respectful way. And so to that end, uh, we do provide resources, consultation, and advice. So sometimes folks may come to us to say, not because you know they want to report someone or something, just say, hey, look, I need some help 
with a, a difficult matter. In fact, I think this morning we got a report which was very much that, where someone was like, there are people upset in this issue and I'm not, you know, and I don't know how to deal with it. Can you, can you give me some advice? So right? it's not, so that's what we, we, it's not just about reporting people because that's what people sometimes think. It's about like, I need some tools, I need some help. Right. This is, we do this kind of stuff. And if it is about, I want you to be aware of certain situations, but I don't really want you to do anything. That's very much the kind of, inf like the yeah. kind of stuff we would also like to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and, and it's, um, yeah, so, so we, you know, again, we, we, we like to kind of joke that we're, you know, we're not the Drupal police. Uh, we're here to really help people out as much as possible. If it is necessary for us to, you know, take immediate action to address something that's going on, we will absolutely do that. But as much as possible, we want to encourage people to try to, you know, solve, have the tools uh, and resources solve problems themselves. Uh, we also uh, will talk about and share some of our experiences and best practices with other open source projects and communities. This is something uh, we've been pushing quite a bit in the last year or so. Um, I mean, in short, right, what we do is, everything we do is try to help improve the overall health of the community. So, specifics. What have we been up to lately? Um, so, both at DrupalCon Nashville and here in DrupalCon Seattle, we've uh, organized workshops. Uh, for uh, both current and kind of uh, emerging leaders in our community to help them learn uh, things like basic uh, leadership skills and concepts, we did, which we did in Nashville. Uh, here in Seattle, we have a, a focus group that uh, has been working both yesterday and today on just kind of some basic um, communication frameworks. Uh, we have a lot of different groups and subgroups within the Drupal community. Um, that um, don't always know how to talk and communicate with each other. So we're really trying to help uh, develop a framework so that that can be uh, better and more effective. In the last year, we also uh, developed a code of ethics. Um, this really just so kind of put down in paper and memorialized some of the expectations that we have uh, for each other around uh, subjects such as confidentiality, conflicts of interest, you know, what do we do if we encounter a situation where, you know, one of us might, you know, have a business relationship with uh, someone who's involved? How do we disclose that, recuse ourselves if necessary? How do we make sure that when people bring issues and concerns to us, we're handling that uh, information in a confidential way so that people do feel safe bringing their concerns to us, particularly if there is a power imbalance between the individuals involved? This uh, documentation is online, and, it and is, we yeah. have issue cues, like if you have questions or concerns about some of this, we want it to be an open process for it. Exactly, and you know, and a lot of, of you know, what we've done both with our, their code of ethics and with our governance has been really informed by this kind of public feedback from the community. So um, the kind of big thing we did in the last year was we uh, changed our charter to improve our governance. So previously, we had been chartered directly by Dries as the project lead. Um, this was a not. This was a situation that that um, made sense uh, at the time that the community working group was created. Uh, you know, back in 2013, as our community has grown and scaled, that didn't really grow in scale. Uh, it wasn't working for us. It wasn't working for the community, and it wasn't working for Dries either. So. Uh, we now report to a review panel, and I'll introduce those folks in the next slide, but it's essentially the two community elected uh, DA board members plus a representative from another open source project. So the idea there is that there is some, with the community elected board members, you have uh, folks who are in some way representing the interests of the community because they've been elected by the community, and then you also have a representative who can bring in an independent outside perspective um, that isn't tied to the Drupal community. We now have uh, defined terms and term limits, uh, so we now serve uh, up to two, three-year terms. Um, and we've also kind of tweaked some of the other wording in our charter to make it more explicit that, you know, we're not just an enforcement body or a conflict resolution body. We really are here to help promote community health. So these are the members of the uh, Community Working Group Review Committee. Um, Suzanne uh, Durgashev, uh, Ryan Zrama, and Jono Bacon. We actually met with Ryan and Suzanne earlier today. Uh, Jono Bacon, for those who don't know, is uh, uh, he's, he's a 
pretty pretty uh, great person to have on on this uh, on this panel. He um, literally wrote the book on open source community management. Um, I got to meet him uh, last year. He uh, was one of the folks who runs the uh, Community Leadership Summit uh, every year that's kind of around OzCon. And so we're really, really uh, happy and privileged uh, to have him lending his expertise um, and, and, and oversight. And to be fair, like we knew who the third member was when you got, when it was announced yeah. on the tree snow. We did. Yeah, we literally found out yesterday morning when it went up on the big slide. We're like, oh, cool. They're like, oh, Jono, that's a good choice. <laughs> Uh, so what are we up to next, right? So as I mentioned before, we're continuing to expand our membership and our subject matter experts. We're particularly focused on more international perspectives. Um, now that we are, our charter is moved under the Drupal Association, we want to find ways to better leverage that relationship in order to better serve the community. Uh, you know, we have access now to, you know, DA funds to support our workshops. Uh, we have legal protection from the DA, which is, uh, really, really good to have, and uh, you know, we're really looking at this as an opportunity to do more proactively for the community. One of the things that um, we were also talking about this morning that we're working on is how creating some resources for camp and event organizers um, around code of conduct enforcement. We're kind of thinking of it as like a playbook with different scenarios for you know what to do, um, and. Uh, we're also uh, going and starting here today, right now, uh, you are the first to hear, uh, we are uh, reviewing and updating our community code of conduct. So, our current community code of conduct, and to be clear, this is the code of conduct that's on drupal.org and applies to the community and its interactions as a whole, as opposed to the code of conduct that is here at DrupalCon for this event. Those are two separate things. The uh, community code of conduct is a, you know, again, it's not just about events, it's about every interaction in the community. Uh, it was adopted in 2010, the last time we made any major updates to it, which was to add our conflict resolution process, was in 2014. Uh, it is based on an old version of the Ubuntu code of conduct that they aren't even actually using anymore. Uh, and then over the last two years, you know, through the various community conversations and governance conversations, we've received some pretty clear and consistent feedback uh, that uh, we need to clarify the purpose and applicability of the code of conduct, um, you know, being more specific about what kinds of behaviors, how the code of conduct is applied, what the consequences are for code of conduct violations. Um, you know, the, the distinction between, uh, you know, beliefs and behaviors, which was uh, an issue a couple years ago with some high profile incidents, and making it really clear that, you know, we are all participants and members of the community, but there are some of us who get up at the stage at DrupalCon uh, or other events or who might have leadership roles in the community who have additional responsibilities that come with that and understanding what those higher levels of, um, what those higher expectations are. Making it really clear what the scope is of the code of conduct, um, particularly with interactions between people that may occur outside of the specific context of Drupal. One of the things that we see quite a lot, um, that we see fairly often as, you know, people uh, may uh, get into conflicts on social media and, uh, and these are people whose kind of primary relationship is through the Drupal project, but, you know, but the dispute or conflict they have may not specifically take place in a Drupal space, and making sure that it's really clear that yes, this is something that is uh, under that jurisdiction. So um, there's a big long link there. We're gonna uh, tweet it out from our Twitter account so you don't have to write it down. Uh, but we have a, a Google form. We're launching a survey today, uh, at least through the end of the month, to get more feedback from the community on what our next steps are there. So um, speaking of that Twitter account, at Drupal Community, you can see it right there. Um, we keep the community up to date. Um, through uh, public versions of our minutes, which are redacted to remove names and other identifying information, but gives folks a sense of the kinds of issues that we're working on. We promote those via our Twitter accounts. Sometimes when it's an issue of a kind of a certain kind of scope and you know, uh, public nature, uh, we may issue a public statement uh, regarding uh, something that uh, a lot of people are upset about or concerned about. 
we um, release an annual-ish report <laughs> on Drupal.org. Uh, we have the public issue queue that Jordana mentioned before. And um, we do sessions like this, um, not just at DrupalCon, but we also are at different camps and events. And so Mike and I did a similar session at MidCamp uh, a few weeks ago. Alex, you're doing a session Camp, Spain. in Spain in a couple weeks. So um, we really want to make sure that as many folks in the community have the opportunity to hear from us um, as possible. These sessions normally have ones of people. It, it, yes, yeah, single so, digits. So. So, and some of the feedback we want to hear is like maybe this doesn't make as much sense as you think, and maybe right. something else would make sense. So we, if, if th that, that's some stuff we want to hear, so right. how to make things better. Yeah. So at this point, right, so we have that, that kind of sample issue um, that, that I think would be fun to go through. But at this point, I think it would be good to take a pause and see if anyone had any, any questions, observations. Just want to say hi. <laughs> go ahead. Come on up to the, to the mic if you do. Or if you don't, if you don't feel comfortable coming up to Mike, you can say some, and we'll re, and we'll yeah. kind of paraphrase the question, and yeah, that's we, fine. It, it's kind of weird because we try and make an effort to make ourselves as available as possible by at events, by doing things like this, which are always well attended. Um, I do bops at camps, but I, I'd say the vast majority of the feedback or the questions we get are often just one on one and yeah. mm -hmm. which is fine. And, and that's well, fine. You yeah. can always just come up to us. But David has. <laughs> no, I was, I was just going to agree. I think these don't make sense as someone who's done them as well. Like right. It's always like five people show up yeah. and it's, right. it's, it takes up a session slot. Yeah. Right. So maybe there's a better idea, whether it's something at the exhibit hall stage or something that's just independent, whereas you know it's a small area or you're not taking a slot from someplace else. It, it, that might make more sense. Yeah. But I, I mean, agree there's also... It's good to like make sure you're all in the same place and people can ask you questions. I think we just might need a different solution. Yeah. The Drupal.org ones are the same way. It's like a lot of these, it's like five people show up to yeah. these things. Yeah. It's almost like, in a sense, we want to we want to document that we are making ourselves as available as possible to the community. Right. And so one of the ways is doing that by having a session at DrupalCon. But I, right. I, I agree with you completely. I mean, this could be in a, in a, in a tiny little room and that would be fine. <laughs> or maybe it, it would make more sense to do a booth. Or something, yeah. yeah. So it is. It, it is. Uh, we are open to suggestions. Or the box space, maybe. Oh, yeah. If that's not taken up. That makes sense. Smaller areas. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, from my perspective, I mean, it's 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 tricky because it's like, want to have the opportunity to to have conversations, right? That are not just like us on stage looking down on on, on everyone, but also like we do have like some information and update, right? That we also want to make sure people are aware of. So. You know, I think this is definitely something to, to keep exploring, but thank you. So, so do we want to just dive in on this issue? Yeah. All right. So, um, so we took, um, we took a uh, example issue out of our public minutes, right? So uh, this is going to be the part where we're going to kind of talk about this, but we have to be really careful because uh, we don't want to, for anyone uh, who might have some awareness uh, or might not have some awareness. We don't want to kind of reveal who this is, what this, this is. So we're going to use gender neutral pronouns and, and everything. And this is, this is for, um, you know, confidentiality for us is really important. And, and it's uh, both for the person who has had a report made about them, um, as well as um, for the folks who you know, are bringing their concerns to the CWG. We want to make sure that people can, you know, bring concerns, let us know, um, and feel safe doing so, understand that we're going to treat that with confidentiality so that there won't be, you know, a backlash or retribution or something like that. Um, and I, because we know that that's a really big way that people, you know, if, if, if they don't, if they think, you know, they wouldn't, they don't bring stuff to us if they're worried about, you know, uh, the person finding out or someone else finding out and engaging in retribution. So this one was interesting. Um, so last summer, um, we received several reports um, about, um, about a community member and their behavior their, at in-person events. Uh, and, and, and particularly, uh, you know, with regard to 
things that they were saying and doing uh, at after parties, right? It's after hour social events. So I'm gonna interject quickly, yeah. and because I wanna highlight something. Um, sometimes people, we hear it a lot, they don't wanna file a report because they don't wanna make a big deal or they don't wanna get, do we have a, a, a way of reporting to us where it's where we, we uh, you want to make us aware of something, but do not but not to t necessarily take action? Yep. Because you want you say like this happened, and I think you should be aware of it because if it's happening more, it's a big thing. But if it's this one-off event, it's okay. Right. Because if nobody reports these things, nobody's gonna. We can't see if this is a pattern of behavior. If this is a if this is something we should be concerned about or not. Right. So. So we had received, right, so we had initially received kind of a, a heads up report of that nature, like, hey, no action necessary, wanted to let you know that this thing happened, right? Uh, so we're like, okay, we'll take, thank you for your report, we will put that in our record. We then subsequently received uh, a couple of other reports that had to do, well, we received, I think, uh, both formal and informal reports, right? And we received a formal report that uh, was specifically related to a specific incident at an event. It was from someone who had observed the behavior uh, and you know was in a position to speak with us about it. We the third hand report, or sorry, the informal report we received was a combination of uh, sort of I'm aware of these things that happen to other people, right? So it was a third hand report. And some of the things in that third hand report concerned us greatly, but because it was third hand, we didn't have any way to speak with the person who was involved or validated or anything. So based on what we had, we definitely felt it was important to have a, a talk with this person. And so that's what Jordana and I did. We reached out, we spoke with this person, we're like, hey, you should know, um, you know, these things are going on, um, these reports have been made. Um, so we spoke with this person, they acknowledged that, yeah, you know, sometimes. They were, th so to be clear, what he means, it's, these things were vague, mm -hmm. but it looked like it could be something bigger, but we didn't know exactly what. So when we talked to this person, we, ha we couldn't be more direct, like you did this. Right. But we, were, we wanted to make sure that this may be, maybe this talk would be a good thing to figure out Sometimes people aren't aware they're making pe other people feel uncomfortable, right. for example. So, you know, so we felt it was a pretty good conversation. Uh, the person was listening to us, was hearing our feedback, uh, was very um, apologetic, uh, you know, for kind of the, the specific incidents that we could, you know, um, uh, speak with them very directly about. And, uh, you know, and, and promise, promise to, to- Try to do better. Do better. Right, we're like, okay, so, um, you know, and then, um, so that was, that was uh, sort of last summer, last <coughs> fall, um, and then come around again to the spring, and uh, this person uh, went to an event, uh, they went to an after party, they had too much to drink, and the same kind of behavior repeated itself. And uh, so they ended up uh, being asked to leave that particular event. Uh, we were made by aware. By the event organizers. By the event organizers. We were made aware of that. And subsequently, we also received uh, a number of additional reports uh, that from other people who were at the event, who were aware of what happened, who that corroborated some of those previous third hand uh, incidents that we were, and also some new incidents as well. So yeah. we very clearly at this point had a, a pattern of conduct. People, should, people can, so go ahead. I was gonna say, we should also mention that, you know, while we do have an incident report form, um, we are more than willing to talk to people on a much more informal basis. Yep. And even so far as in an anonymous basis where um, in this particular case we had someone approach one of us one-on-one -on -one yep. and saying, I have some information, but I don't want to be known. And so at this point in time, only right. one person on the panel knows who this anonymous source yep. is. So we are, you know, we are, we are 
very flexible when it comes to talking to people and, and respecting You put safety first and right. protect, you try to protect everybody. So, so I, I forgot one thing I realized in the little timeline. You and I had a second conversation with this person about a month before the event in question. Yeah. So we had, had, we had had two conversations both last fall and this past winter before the incident occurred, the, the subsequent incident occurred this spring. And why we kind of say these things about, we, we're trying to highlight these things about, you can informally come to us, you can come to us at any time. Because when, how these other reports came to pass is somebody, like people came to us like, are you aware of this? And we said, no. So. Okay. This is, and this, this, that's, how, that's how reports started coming in. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah, so, so, the, then, uh, so the, the bottom line is it on, on that is like, so now we had a, a full body reports, a uh, documented pattern of behavior and conduct. Uh, so we met as a group. Alex actually had to recuse himself from the issue because uh, he had had interactions with this person in a different context. Uh, and uh, so the, the three of us, you know, uh, met, talked about it in a separate area on our Slack channel uh, where Alex wasn't present and, uh, and, and came to a very clear consensus that uh, this person uh, needed to not attend uh, in-person events um, or hold community leadership positions until they could, uh, one, change in fact, you know, we were sure that they were able to change their behavior and two, uh, actually be able to, in our satisfaction, address the impact of their past behavior. Uh, so what we, you know, we shared this with the person. We said, you know, this is our decision. Uh, we are willing to check back in with you in a year to see how you're doing. This doesn't mean that like you can, you know, come back at that time. We're just gonna check in with you and see where things are at. Um, and, and see if there's an opportunity. One of the things that's really important to us, uh, you know, with, um, I would say, almost every case that we work with, uh, is that we want, um, we want folks to, um, to have an opportunity to address uh, the impact uh, of their behavior and uh, if they're able to successfully do so, have a path for reentering the community. So this is the whole thing when, when we ask, if you, if you do a party analogy, when we ask somebody to leave the party, we always want to have um, somebody, a way for them to come back if they address all of these things. Right. So we don't like lock the door and throw away the key. This is not something we... Right. We do our best to not have to get to this point. Yeah, yeah. This, this is... This, this don't kind like of doing thing this. happens a handful of times a year, a couple times a year, I would say. Uh, you know, the vast majority of the issues we deal with are, you know, people saying rude things to each other in the issue queues or on Slack, and, you know, those are much more straightforward and easy to deal with, but we wanted to use this one as an example because it gives you a sense of kind of the thorny nature <coughs> and the length of the issues that we have to deal with. So. Understanding that we've got two minutes left, <laughs> we've just dumped a whole bunch of stuff. Does anyone have any questions at this point? Questions, ideas, concerns, <laughs> comments. Does anyone on our panel have anything else to add? No, I was gonna say, I mean, the other thorny part of this issue um, for us is there's no, this is, you know, there, we're not announcing who this person is in any of our minutes. Right. So it's, you know, and we've struggled with this, but what if the person did attend the right. event? Yeah, and, and that's so- That's a very thorny issue that we do not have an answer for. We, yeah, we've been struggling with this one. It's like, so um, there's somebody who has been asked not to attend Drupal events. Well, there are, you know, dozens, hundreds of Drupal events around the world all the time. We don't really have any way to enforce that other than that, you know, if we become aware that someone is uh, is violating a ban, I guess uh, would be the way to put it. Is um, you know we can you know we can address that at that point. We can you know say take look, additional measures. Right. 
but but you know but beyond that you know and some of the some camp organizers said like look hey we don't want to in, inadvertently have people coming to our camps or speaking at our events who shouldn't be here and we can't really give them a blacklist of you know banned individuals that's not uh, something uh, we've had a lot of discussion about it and I think where we're at at this point is that we probably need to bring in some legal advice to make sure that we're uh, doing it in a responsible way because you know publishing names of people who've been banned can have other repercussions as well and also bring in community thoughts like how how do people feel about it, how maybe there are some ideas out there that we haven't thought of yeah to address but, this but we have talked with people in other open source communities and you know certainly and no one's really that we've talked to has really figured this one out yet um, and certainly not in a uh, community that's as broad and decentralized as Drupal is the fun thing is Drupal is on the bleeding edge with these things Yay. <laughs> What's not great about that is we, do, we can't look at other communities and be like, oh, how did you solve this problem? Because they haven't, or they haven't had to deal with these problems in this way. So it's, it's not good. It's hard. Yep. <laughs> That's why we need community involvement. As well. That's right. So thank you all for coming. And uh, yeah. If you want to know more in, in, in a different way, come find us. We are very open and approachable, and we could talk. Absolutely. You won't get in trouble. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.